We come on the sweet John Deere. At a point to where our batch is getting into Vaseline stage, and you can see that's what it looks like. So, what I'm going to do is turn off my crock pot because I feel like it's reached a point where it's cooked and done. You can see the Vaseline look. And now, what we're going to do is I'm going to let this cool for a little bit. Okay, now it's, it's about 150 degrees, so I'm going to start adding the hydrosol first. And this the hydrosol is cool. It's been in the refrigerator and it's cold. And it's going to help also uh, cool down the soap for when we put the essential oil in it. And you have to remember that we divided our water uh, 430 grams with distilled of uh, distilled water and 430 grams of the hydrosol. So what we're doing is we're putting uh, the liquid liquid measurement that that remains from the recipe back into the soap. So it'll it'll absorb it and it'll be good. And uh, even if a certain amount of it isn't absorbed, it will lay in between the layers. And I can already smell it. It smells great. Now, I have been reading a lot on hydrosols, and it, I have read in the next aromatherapy book that even if a hydrosol has lost its aroma, which would take quite a long time, 18 months, you know, possibly longer, uh, that it still retains the benefits of the hydrosol. So it's still, you're still going to get the benefits from it, even if the odor has dissipated. But it takes quite a long time to do that and most people are not going to keep a bar of soap for 18 months. So you're going to use your soap. Okay, now I'm going to add more hydrosol in there. Now if this in, if this last video seems a little different from, the, from 1, 2, and 3, it is. Because when I was doing my hydrosol soap, the, the uh, chamomile roman uh, hydrosol with uh, lavender oil, my batteries gave out. So this is actually a second batch, and I had to wait until I got to this point to, to finish my video. So to show you all exactly you know, how, how it's going to work out, when to put your hydrosol in and then your essential oil and to show you of course what it's, what it's going to look like so um, and when you do that and I, this was an important step and so I, I had to make sure it got into the video this recipe is exactly the same as the other recipe I've done nothing different so this is just the the end result of when you put your hydrosol in and your essential oil, oil in uh, and this is the hot process method uh, when combining hydrosols to your soap or incorporating. So I'm going to add more hydrosol. Okay. It's looking good. Now I did let this batch seize and I did add probably about a half a cup of water to get it to unseize and go back to the consistency like mashed potatoes which which you know is what I want. So 
um, I didn't have to add too much moisture into it to get it to not to get it to pass the seize point. So um, all the extra moisture that is going into this batch is definitely uh, from the hydrosol. 98% of it. So that's a good thing. And remember when you do, if you do uh, the technique where it seizes and you add uh, distilled water back into it, remember only use what you need because it can make it too wet and your bar will not harden so you don't want that. Okay. Now I've got my hydrosol in there and it smells really good and I've already added my vitamin E for a natural preservative and now I'm going to add two ounces of Essential Depot Lavender Essential Oil. I noticed earlier when I checked my video that it was kind of blurry but hopefully y'all can see that. And I do know that this is two ounces because I used two ounces in my other batch and I have half a bottle left. There's four ounces in this bottle so I know that I'm going to add two ounces of essential oil to this batch and it's a five pound batch so it's going to be uh, there we go something in there okay I'm going to mix my essential oil into it now one of the things that I have done in the past, uh, if I were going to rebatch or let something seize because I divided my water up, um, is if you think you've added too much water, uh, one of your options is to just turn it into a salt soap. And so you would use either half, like if you had five pounds, you'd have two and a half pounds of salt or even three or four pounds of salt and that would definitely harden your bar up for sure. You might have to let it sit for you know two or three weeks and let it finish hardening but that's a good way to save your soap. Okay now I have my essential oil completely incorporated and I'm going to get my mold and uh, when I do we'll mold this and add our chamomile flowers. So I'll see y'all in just a little bit. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, put the soap in my mold and as you can see I have my chamomile flowers and they are so pretty and boy they smell good. Mmm, just like chamomile. And I'm, this is Essential Depot as well. Hopefully that's not blurry. But I'll have a link on where you can get this on their website. And also uh, the hydrosol for this soap. I'll have a link for that. So now I'm going to mold my soap. And you know, on hot process, you have to really make sure it's down in the cracks and crevices when you first begin to put it in there so you're not having any air pockets or. Uh, it, if you do that on hot process and you no, don't pay attention, it'll make your uh, soap have, it'll be crumbly, have holes in it, and you don't want holes in it. But hot process is pliable. I mean, you, once you get it out of your mold, it's still soft enough that if you did have a hole, you could take uh, your samples and break them up and smooth out your main mold before you cut it and uh, take care of any holes that you see. But, I mean, to avoid all that in the first place, you really want to um, to just not have any pockets. So I'm going to drop this on the floor here. Oops. Okay, and you can see that that laid in there really well. Clean this off here for a second. Grab my spoon, spatula. Okay. And let's see, I want to build it up a little bit. I actually probably have enough 
left in my crock pot for my two pound mold. So, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. And I made sure I didn't have any bubbles. That's a good thing. And I'm going to add my chamomile. And I'm going to kind of stuff it down in there. I'm just going to do it right down the center. I think that will be really pretty. And then what if, whatever falls off, I'll save that because, you know, everything costs money, so. But I think this will be pretty. And I'm kind of shoving it down in there because this is hot process. It's not cold process. I mean, this soap is cooked, so if I want to make sure that the product gets down into it, I'm going to have to physically put it there. Okay, and I think that is going to look really pretty. Okay. Hi there. Okay, our loaf was finished. I unmolded it and took it out of the paper, and it turned into a really nice loaf. And I have my little bucket here to catch the uh, the loose chamomile because I, I don't like to lose any of that, and it turned out really pretty. And it's a, a hard loaf, and this recipe does make a hard bar. And as you can see, I've already cut a few slices. And when this hardens up a little more in two or three days, I'm going to trim it up and uh, to where it's easier to hold. Uh, my customers like that, and, and I seem to make them happy when I do it. So that's, that's what I do with all my bars. And uh, so I'm going to show you. It's not hard to cut either. It's... I let it set overnight, and it's firm. Uh, if I waited any longer than that, though, it would be hard to cut. So, overnight uh, in the mold to let it really firm up, and then I would cut it. And uh, so this is the uh, end of our uh, hydrosol video, and I hope you liked it. And we're going to be doing more hydrosol videos. Uh, the next one I do is going to show you how to use the cold process method. And um, I'm going to probably, I'm thinking about doing a hunter soap for that. Um, so when you see me again, uh, we're going to be doing a cold process hydrosol hunter soap. And uh, I'm thinking about uh, either uh, camphor or cedar wood. So we'll just have to see at that point. Um, and uh, the recipe that I'm giving today and the recipe that I gave uh, in the other, in one of other video in, within this lesson uh, tutorial, um, they're both good recipes and um, they, they do make a hard bar. So you could actually use this recipe for any hydrosol soap that you want to make. So.